Hi, I'm Maris, and in this video I'm going to be talking to you about some pediatric lab values of note. I'm going to be following along using our lab values flashcards. These are available on our website, levelupRN.com, if you want to grab a set for yourself. Or if you're more of a fan of digital products, I would invite you to check out Flashables, the digital version of all of our flashcards available on demand and at your fingertips wherever you are. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So first up, I just want to talk to you about um, two key important lab values that would be present in a complete blood count, a CBC. And uh, you'll see here on the screen that I've got the expected ranges for you for um, red blood cells and also for hemoglobin. And this is broken down into infants, being those who are 12 months of age or younger, um, and uh, then older children. So the thing that I really just want to call your attention to here is that there's nothing really significantly out of whack about these values, but it is normal and expected for the infant to have um, lower red blood cell count and lower hemoglobin than the, the older child. The reason here being that this has a lot to do with where the infant was getting their uh, nutrition from, which was in utero, right? It takes time to build up iron stores, uh, to build our hemoglobin up, um, to build up our red blood cells. All of that takes time, and a lot of that has to do with things such as diet. We're going to get good iron coming from the foods we are eating. We don't get great iron coming from breast milk, um, and, and so this can also uh, affect some of those things too. So just pay attention, just keep in mind that an infant, it's totally normal for there to be a slightly lower RBC and hemoglobin count for them versus for an older child. Now I want to talk to you about hypoglycemia cutoffs by age in children. So um, I'm going to talk to you about three different groups here. The first one is infants within the first four hours of life. We put the cutoff there for hypoglycemia as anything less than 40, uh, 40 milligrams per deciliter. Um, very, very important lab value to know, especially if you are in maternity or pediatrics right now. And then the one that's going to come right after that is going to be a child who is in their first fourth through 24th hour of life. So this is, um, this is again, we're still on our first day of life, but we're past the first four hours. The cutoff here for hypoglycemia is going to be less than 45 milligrams per deciliter. Again, this is just crucial information for you to have if you are in maternity or pediatrics. Um, this is really, really important info. Then I just want to contrast this with children at large. Um, children, we're going to say that the cutoff for hypoglycemia is less than 70 milligrams per deciliter. Uh, this is the same as the, the guidelines we've given you for adults. I just wanted to put it up here to show you and contrast the difference between what we consider hypoglycemia in a child versus a newborn at the different points of their first day on Earth. Just their first day on Earth, all right? Okay, now the other thing that goes in with this with blood sugar is talking about diabetic ketoacidosis. We do have a different threshold for what we consider DKA in a child versus an adult, and that is going to be a blood sugar greater than 250 milligrams per deciliter. So again, just important to remember that although we would love to think about children as being just small adults, they are not. They are a completely different animal, and we need to have the information uh, that goes in hand with treating them so that we are treating them equitably and in line with what is going on with them their bodies, not an adult's body. Up next, I want to talk to you about bilirubin. And bilirubin is a really important lab value when it comes to monitoring newborns. So newborns uh, can have a bunch of different things going on with their ability to break down bilirubin. Um, and, and if you want more information on this, I would strongly encourage you to go watch our video uh, in the maternity section about bilirubin levels uh, and what those interventions may be. But the thing that I really want to call your attention to here is that normal levels of bilirubin at or, e or less than 24 hours of age. Um, so we're talking about first day of life at or before that 24th hour, the normal 
level cutoff is going to be less than five milligrams per deciliter. Again, remember this is a wildly different version than what we would expect to see in an adult patient and that's why you need to know it and know that that cutoff is less than five for a, a newborn on their first day of life. There are other levels um, that depending on where they are in their, uh, you know, in in their lived experience, uh, how many days they've been on earth, um, we can, uh, we have different levels that say when we may need to intervene. Um, and I I'll go over some of these with you, but the thing that I really want to bring your attention to here is that a lot of this is going to be based on your facility policy. So I would just really encourage you to be familiar with whatever your facility says. Um, but for uh, a child who is less than 24 hours old, a bilirubin level greater than 10 milligrams per deciliter requires intervention. For 24 to 48 hours of life, it's going to be greater than 15. 29 to 72 hours of life, it's going to be greater than 18. And greater than 72 hours of life, it's going to be a level above 20 is going to require intervention. And lastly, I want to talk to you about lead levels in children. This is an incredibly important lab value um, for kids, especially when it comes to certain uh, pediatric just visits, routine visits, they will have this lead level checked. And this is because lead is a neurotoxin and uh, children are especially at risk for lead poisoning because they put everything in their mouths. So if they live in a, a home that was built before a certain time, uh, there could be lead paint on the walls that could be chipping and peeling, things of that nature. So if you want more information on lead poisoning, go watch the video in our pediatrics playlist about lead. But here's what I want you to know. Normal levels, the expected range here is going to be less than 3.5 micrograms per deciliter. We really don't expect there to be much lead in your system at all, uh, and the presence of lead can be really catastrophic. So this is super important to know. So if we have increased levels of lead in the blood, this is indicative of lead poisoning. Some possible signs and symptoms that go along with this would be cognitive impairment, uh, impaired hearing, growth delays, anemia, vomiting, fatigue, anything of that nature. Uh, but the really, really big thing that I want to call your attention to here is that it's not just enough to know uh, what the lead level is, that they have some lead poisoning. You need to also know for NCLEX purposes that a lead level greater than or equal to 45 micrograms per deciliter requires chelation therapy, meaning this is not something that we can just try to change their environment and limit their exposure and their body will work it out. This patient with a, a lead level greater than or equal to 45 micrograms um, per, uh, per deciliter requires chelation therapy to bind up that uh, lead so that it is not going to harm them any further. All right, I'm so glad you stayed until the end because I'm going to test your knowledge of some key facts I provided in this video using our quiz questions. How does the expected red blood cell level for an infant compare to that of an older child? Infants may have slightly lower RBC levels than older children. What serum lead level may indicate the need for chelation therapy? Greater than or equal to 45 micrograms per deciliter. How should the nurse interpret a blood glucose of 45 milligrams per deciliter in a child who is three hours old? This is a normal finding hypoglycemia in the first four hours of life begins at less than 40 milligrams per deciliter. All right, that is it for this video. I do hope you learned something. If you did, would you leave us a comment and let us know something you learned? We really do like seeing that. And if you have a great way of remembering something that I didn't mention in this video, leave that as a comment too. We like seeing it, but I know it's beneficial to other learners as well. All right, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much and happy studying. We invite you to subscribe to our channel and share a link with your classmates and friends in nursing school. And if you found value in this video, be sure to hit that like button and let us know what you found to be particularly helpful.